Hey Jexateers, thanks again for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, my name is Riley and I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Joe and Fran. Joe and Fran are a married couple who are also former Jehovah's Witnesses. Joe and Fran only woke up and left the organization relatively recently, but already they are making huge strides in activism and helping other XJWs. Okay, hi, Joe and Fran, how are you guys doing? Good, doing thank good. you. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So please tell us how, how you first became involved with Jehovah's Witnesses. They came to our door and they um, were asking questions and answering questions out of the, from the Bible, mm -hmm. which, which gained my interest because we were interested in finding out and learning more about the Bible, interestingly, and as well as looking for an opportunity for, for the family, our four children and us, to uh, volunteer for, uh, for um, charity. charity work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So okay. I saw that as an opportunity at that point. Right, right. Right. It's not often that I speak to people who um, converted into the religion other than being born in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah we were uh, Catholic. So we were like um, 33 at the time. Yeah. We had been Catholic and um, we did not want to raise our children Catholic. And... Yeah, we kind of basically left the Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was Catholic, grade school, Catholic high school. Fran, you were... Uh, not Catholic high school, grade no, school, or high to, school. Uh, no, but, but yeah, you were in. I went to church. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay. we basically left it. Yes. Right, right. So you mentioned um, that they were answering questions from the Bible, and that that appealed to you. Yes. Was there anything else that that appealed to you in their approach? Uh, I know one specific question that Joe had because I wasn't there. I was tending to the children. And Joe said, well, what's the use if we're all just, if the earth is just going to blow up in, in smithereens? And so right away, um, he went to Revelation eleven eighteen, And so that kind of, you thought that that was interesting. Yeah, the, that, that's, that, uh, that meant something at that point. Bring to, mm -hmm. to bring to ruin those ruining the earth. Mm -hmm. In other words, a distinction. It wouldn't just be everything. Right. It would just be those ruining the earth. I said, oh, that's hopeful. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. So it, what do they teach will happen with the earth in uh, Catholicism? Well, uh, um, Catholicism. honestly, I really don't know, and I really can't speak to that. I, I, and I, really, I wouldn't even bother trying or, <laughs> right. or, or even interested in finding out. Um, but what the witnesses at that point showed the, is that red book you can live forever in paradise on yeah. earth which was very new very mm -hmm. new idea it was 1985 yeah and um he was a pioneer yeah so they came three times to our door and on the third time it was the memorial season yeah. just like now mm -hmm. and they invited us to the memorial and we said well what's that and they said well it's the most important event for christians so Joe said, well, if we think we're Christians, maybe we should go and check it out because we had been searching. Yeah. And yeah. so we did. And, you know, it was very nice. We, they were a little overdressed for us because, you know, we didn't Easter, dress it was, up. It was Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like Easter Sunday. It's like, oh, my goodness, they're taking this seriously. I, yeah, we looked. Yeah. First we said, well, we're not really dressed like them. You know, should we still go in? And Joe said, well, if they're going to accept us the way we are, then it'll be okay. And sure enough, they did. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they loved Bambas. They loved Bambas. It was a whole yeah. family. I yeah. mean, it was a husband and a wife. Yeah. And, and four kids. Three children. Three children. And I was children pregnant. Children. Well, four. Yeah, yeah, I was pregnant for the yeah. last one. So, yeah, they loved Bambas. Oh, yeah. And they, you know, uh, we went. That was on a Thursday was the memorial. <clears throat> then they said, well, we have a meeting on Sunday. So we went to the Sunday meeting. And then what happened? That was when Dan. Uh, Sunday meeting, yeah. At, um, and at the end of the Sunday meeting, uh, the elder, the PO at that point, presiding overseer or whatever they were called, then asked me, you know, so what I thought of it. And I said, well, it was very interesting. I said, 
they said it's something that could seem like it could be valuable for the family or helpful for the family. And he asked if I were, in, we were interested in continuing. I said, well, actually, we were, uh, we were seeking to change our location. We, we, we were planning on a move to a, a warmer climate. At the time, I had a difficult time with the cold up here. We're in central New York, and it's kind of cold in the winter. And so he kind of looked at me and kind of stared in my eye and said, well, maybe you should change your attitude instead. And I was taken aback slightly. And I, uh, being the open person that I was, um, I thought, hmm, okay, fair enough. Maybe I could change my attitude. <laughs> it, because I realized at that point the f it, it could be beneficial for the family, for the young ones. There was, it was family involvement, there were families, and it was a good um, training. It could be a good training. So I said, okay, fair enough, we'll, we'll try. Um, and, uh, and I was the one that liked the uh, meetings. I, I'm social and, and so we missed one meeting, uh, you know, right, uh, right after that. And I said, oh, we could have been at the meeting. And so the next Sunday we did, and we kept going to the meetings and yeah. before you know it, 36 years into it, we're doing quick builds. We're, you know, we went to an international convention. Everything happened like right when we were first coming in. We got immersed into it. And personally, I, and this is where the conflicts arise, that I exist in conflicts. I did not like the meetings. I really did not like the meeting. I, I mean, I had many years of schooling, uh, uh, six years of college. Um, and I wasn't ready for more schooling um, but I recognized but maybe the family needs this and so I chose to remain and us to remain but I didn't but I never liked the arrangements that they had for the people I, I never liked the arrangements that they, they just it just didn't coincide with anything that I learned in higher education it just didn't coincide yeah and looking back on it like Joe's you went through depression Oh, yeah. And, you know, there was one elder that kind of picked up on it. They didn't understand he, depression. He was, he was perceptive. That one yeah, elder. that one was one who was yeah. younger and a little more uh, in, the, in the world, you would say, working in the world. So he kind of understood people better than the typical uh, in the congregation witness. And so he recognized this man's going through depression. And there were reasons for it at the time, either health or a family situation or whatever. So yeah. I, I was thankful for that. Um, but that didn't change. That never changed the arrangement that, mm -hmm. that, that was in the congregation. It really never did. It's interesting that you say about, um, y you kind of compared the meetings to, to school and Something that, that sticks out to me when I speak to XJWs who are a bit younger is how different the meetings are compared to when I was young. I feel like in the past, there was, there was a lot more focus on the academic side of the religion. It yeah, was, it yeah. was, you had to be a lot more studious. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but now it's all emotional. It's all yeah, emotional. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we saw that change. We saw that oh, we watched shift. It, we watched it happen. And it was like, wow, this is different. You know, yeah. more videos. The the conventions were different. You know, we used to have in-person dramas. Now it's all on the screen. And the governing body, now you see their faces. Yeah. Whereas before, you didn't even know who the governing body was. Uh, oh, the other thing is we were very close to Bethel. Where we live, we're only three hours north of um, Wallkill, and we were five hours from Brooklyn. Yeah. So we would periodically go and visit. Mm -hmm. And um, the congregation that we were in, it was within the radius where they could send out Bethel speakers. So we always had the Bethel um, ID in front of us and yeah. for our sons to go to Bethel, um, to pioneer. There was a lot of pioneers. So, you know, that was the whole focus. Go to Bethel, pioneer, 
um, and we did, and that's what we focused on. So we were like a model family. Yeah, and, we the, were. And, and the congregation at the time when we were coming in <clears throat> was just coming out of the Ray Franz era. Mm -hmm. um, but where, we didn't know. But we didn't, we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and where the congregations had been basically cleaned out. And now the, this PO that I was talking about, uh, basically he was like their high pressure uh, man to straighten things out and to help it grow, mm -hmm. and he was uh, he was a, a, a he was very much a corporate uh, a corporate strong arm so to speak uh, who knew what he was doing he 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 knew how to uh, all the little tricks for snaring people in basically. Yeah. He and his wife were special pioneers. Yeah, they were sent to pioneers. that congregation. Like Joe said, to straighten it up, and boy, he sure did. Yeah, I mean there there were many pioneers. I think we had fourteen or eighteen. All pioneers the way, sometimes the twenty three. <clears throat> yeah. Because they really pushed pioneering. Yeah. So yeah. that's all we knew. That's yeah. what, th this must be what it's supposed to be like. Yeah. And um, so that's what we. Yeah. Really, we um, were open. Geared our children towards, and they are. They all became yeah. pioneers and they're still all pioneers and their mates are pioneers. How many children do you have? Four. Two and two, two boys, two girls. Yeah. Wow. And they're all still witnesses. Yes. All still witnesses. Yeah. All still. And sh they're shunning, shunning us. Yeah. And yeah, they are. Incidentally, so incidentally, the shunning began um, at just past mm -hmm. the point where we, where we we, when we called the elders in, to, to, we called them to speak to them yes. about the problem with child sexual abuse in the organization. How long ago was this that you that you called in the elders to speak to them about that? About a year ago. Yeah, a year just ago. A, a year a little, ago. Just over a year ago. Yeah. It was like January wow. 2022. Yeah. So you haven't been out of the organization for very long at all? No. 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 But that's what we did. We wanted to go right to the elders yeah. and, you know, yeah. we know we're very disturbed about this. And then we <clears throat> also got in touch with the elder that told Joe that he should change his attitude. Yeah. He went on to become a circuit overseer. Yeah, he was used mightily. And, he was used greatly. And now he's retired circuit overseer. Yeah. But we still, we called him. We said, you know, we're concerned yeah. about what we're hearing. Yeah. And, mm. of course, he tried to squelch that. And, yeah. right, and he, yeah. and... Um, at that point, he called our children because yeah. he knew all our children, and he warned them yeah. because we were asking questions. Because yeah. he said to Joe, he said, "You sound like an upright apostate yeah. for asking questions." You see, his father mm -hmm. had been basically red pilled by Ray Fran's book, and his father, who was a witness and who brought Dan in, um, became apostate x and so dan carried that burden with him mm -hmm. and now he basically saw me as becoming that same apostate that his father became mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. basically at that point i i said dan you should have listened to your father <laughs> um, wow. um, so, and, but, but at that point he proceeded behind our backs boom yeah. to go right to the family and to warn them against us. And that's when the soft shunning started. Oh, it started. Wow. Did, did your children attempt to uh, speak to you about it? A little. Yes, I, I personally yeah. told them about the um, Australian Royal yeah. Commission. Yeah. I laid it all out to them. They didn't want to hear it. And then they were blaming Joe for, you know, going online, <laughs> watching a pasta. And they were trying to get me to go to the yeah. elders oh, yeah. against Joe. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I said, you know, we had problems in our marriage early on. I'm not going to revisit that mm -hmm. same, no. you know, situation. Right. Right. And so we stuck together. We came out, we, 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 we were awake together. We went into it together. We came out of it together. Yeah, I, 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 my faith was strengthening as we were going through it. It wasn't weakening. Mm -hmm. My faith in the organization was plumbing, mm -hmm. but my faith in... Well, God and goodness was strengthening, um, and that's but the so Jehovah's Witness, the, the organization, and God are one in the same. You can't separate the two. 
to a Jehovah's Witness. That's that's the way they see it. Oh, right, exactly, yeah. exactly. No, they, yeah. they have no, there's no tolerance for that. Yeah, and then so. finally, our one daughter who was at, in Pioneer School during that week, she called us mm. and she said, there's something still bothering me. You know, she said, and she came right out and said, do you believe that the governing body is God's spirit anointed on the earth? And we said, no. <laughs> And right away, she said, well, I cannot have any more yeah. association yeah. with you. And that was the last, in last August, that's the last time we spoke with her. Yeah. There, and this is where um, they were very well trained, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mind controlled. They were very well trained. And I, I mean, I, I, I have to give credit where <clears throat> credit is due. The society is very good at snaring people in. Mm -hmm. and, and I was one of them being open and um, I, I basically took on what the society was was uh, influencing us all with and that's basically fear-based uh, and I was concerned for mm -hmm. my family the children yeah. and it, it was important that they <clears throat> basically accept and believe the very same things that they were triggering me with um and uh they're very good at what they do and i'm sorry to say i should have been i should have been more discerning um some things take time mm -hmm. uh, and by the time that i became a little more discerning uh by that time the family was triggered into it and, and, can, and whether or not they could follow is another story and at this point you know they they were born in. We were not born in. We came in with a culture already, uh, and a belief system, and and, uh, and minds with, able to critically think. They they weren't, and this is a very deep lesson uh, for me, mm -hmm. and frankly for others too, to realize that it's so important to develop critical thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, that famous quote. Uh, by Richard Feynman, I'd rather have questions that I can't answer than answers that I can't question. Yeah, right. exactly. Yes. exactly. Yes. But, but the organization does not want people questioning. No, no. In fact, uh, 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 second part to that was, was from one of, uh, someone that uh, one of the uh, producers mentions that yeah. you can question the organization but you can't question the answers hmm. that they give you. And uh, at, the, at that point you realize we have something very uh, cult-like going on. So what was the final straw um, that led to your exit from the organization? It was kind of a development. Mm -hmm. for, you. for me it was that um, the child sexual abuse, the, the hiding of that, the covering it up. But what started when? When was the oh, first Oh, well it? actually, about uh, about four or five least, years ago, yeah, yeah. when we were in the congregation, there was a sister that was, she had five children, and she was always very protective of her children. And I wondered why, because, you know, you don't have to worry here. There's nobody that's going to hurt them. She goes, well, I don't trust, and I've heard that there's child sexual abuse, and I don't give my money to the organization because it's going towards these court cases. and. So, you know, you kind of put it in the back of your mind, and we didn't do anything at that point. I mean, to me, she seemed very sincere and sure about Absolutely, that. Absolutely, And yeah. at that point, it's like, well, what don't I know? Yeah. Um, because we weren't one. Number one, we never had television. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we didn't get to see the documentaries no. that might have been out about that. Right. And we understood that the society... Uh, discouraged uh, any of the um, apostate sites uh, on the internet that said anything critical mm -hmm. of the of, of the watchtower. Uh, you know, they they effectively uh, made us aware that the, mm -hmm. that that's that's a lack of faith and disloyalty if you, if you even see them. So it's like okay, okay, but yet she was the only one at that point right. that, that we I had ever, ever heard, heard of it. that yeah. expressed any kind of concern like that. 
So we yeah. basically we put that one on the shelf for a few yep. years. And it was during the pandemic yeah. when we were on <laughs> Zoom. So we had a lot of time, you know, that, and you have time to think and you're not in that. Once you're in the congregation, once you're in the hall, you're, um, what's the word? You're like mesmerized, you know, you're, you're caught up in it. Once you're at home and you're in a different environment, you have time to think. And so we were thinking, and then Joe, every time the uh, broadcast well, came on, unless there was something before no, that. No, we see, and at the same time it was happening, the society was ramping up its video production yeah. with putting the governing body men larger than life in front of our faces uh, um, with this heavy, heavy emphasis um, as you said, the emotional appeal. And it's like, I, you know, we didn't come into this organization with that, that with that form of control. We really, we just didn't. We hardly even knew that there was a governing body. Mm -hmm. But now here they are, um, full bore in our faces every time w with this very heavy emphasis, uh, basically on mind control. They were, and I realized what they were doing. And it's like, I, I can't stomach this. I mean, every time I heard them or saw them, yeah. it just irritated me. And my anger level just was increasing mm -hmm. every time that I heard them or saw them. And I knew something was was just so, so wrong about it. Um, but yet I didn't have any anything other than my, my intuition at that point. I had no evidence, um, and but at that point it's like I need to know. I mean, I I I, I know something is wrong. I don't know what it is, and for the sake of my family, I I need to know. So one one day I was out in service, and Joe went online, and when I came home he wanted to tell me about it, and I said no, I don't want to hear about it because. I kind of had a feeling that, you know, he had been looking online at apostate, um, liter uh, you know, videos. And he said, well, you really should. And so the next day I did. And then within a week, we, we saw the um, ARC. Yeah. And that was it. I mean, there was no going back after no, that. No, So, yeah, no. it was relatively quick. But we're 71. We just turned 71. And we don't have a lot of time to, you know, we were PIMO for a year. And in and, and this past January, we we um, disassociated. But there were right. a lot of things leading up to that. We gradually, because we wanted to stay connected with the family as long as we could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, we, we, we didn't want such a massive disruption, uh, but rather wanted them to see a... Um, a, a pretty clear example of what it meant to wake up and then to make uh, a definite move to exit uh, without confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even that, even as long as we took with that, it was it was very upsetting for them. Yeah. But past a certain point, we realized it, there's no way we're going to avoid the upset. No. There's no way. They had already been shunning us. Yeah. Everybody had been shunning us. Yeah. So what, what's the difference anyway? So... It was like within a day we called three people and they yeah. said, well, we can't talk to you anymore. Yeah. We can't talk to you anymore. Close people. Close. And we said, well, if they're going to treat us this way, like yeah. we're already disfellowshipped. Yeah. Yeah. So what we did is we texted the elders and we told them, you know, they can announce our name. Because before that, we had gone to a lawyer. We said that we didn't want our name, you know, our reputation. Yeah, and basically I politely warned them yeah. and, and that we don't want our name uh brought up in a congregation in that way if they do then we'll bring whatever legal action against them that we need to um, and that was for a few months yeah until finally we realized you know i'm not going to keep existing in this mm -mm. in this halfway situation yeah so we wanted to make a clear stand and at that point we sent them a text a text and notification written notification that we not only give them permission to announce our name, but we also requested that they announce our name, just so that they know 
um, we are we want no connection anymore. And to follow it up, rather than writing a letter, we just put it on a postcard. Yeah, I didn't want to dignify them with a letter. <laughs> and we sent it on yeah. a little postcard. <laughs> <laughs> that that must have taken an awful lot of courage. That's what everybody says. Um, to us, it was the only thing that we could do. I, I'm totally convinced, Riley, that courage is something that's the only logical thing left to do. Anything else would be illogical. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my approach for it. it and, but it does take a risk. Yeah. There is a risk involved, but it's the only logical risk. So um, what has been the aftermath of, of that decision um, to disassociate? Um, so yes, the, we did not see the children. One time, uh, about a couple weeks after that, my cousin died and so they came to the funeral home that was very nice to and they did you know say hello to us and give us a hug um it was our daughter and our son and our son-in-law but we haven't seen them since right. Right. when when and, and this is when we did see them <clears throat> um and i'm not going to offer why but i think i know why they they appeared to be tortured mm -hmm. now I'm not going to accept responsibility for them being tortured. Um, I think what they, the society puts them through, <clears throat> puts everyone through, mm -hmm. is a form of torture. Yeah. Uh, because it, 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 they, they mishandle people in, in such an authoritarian way. Yeah. And they willingly go through a, a torture uh, just to be what they would call loyal and faithful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the same time, we were interviewed by Wendy Renee. Yeah. And that um, that video has done, it has helped so many people because they see that we're older yeah. and that we were not afraid to speak out. Mm -hmm. And um, our children found out that we were on a program. I'm sure they didn't watch it, but they wrote a letter to Joe's sister and um, her husband because they, you know, they speak to them, they're not witnesses. And they said that, you know, mom and pop were on it. We know that they were on a video and whatever, they were, be, they were being very gracious about it, I thought. Mm. And just to let them know that there are things that happen that are beyond their power and they're just doing what they feel that they need to do. So they knew that we did put that video out. Yeah. Yeah, the whole overall um, umbrella of this whole situation is that the organization <clears throat> has worked very hard at its own undoing. And now it's in the process of undoing. And the individuals, the, the members, the rank and file, us, friend, friends that are in it now, friends that are out, frankly, are all part of it, it is not only witnessing, literally, witnessing it but being a part of it and it, uh, it, it challenges them in all levels emotionally mm -hmm. intellectually and psychologically and um, everybody has the opportunity to prove to be who they need to prove to be um, we found such deep friendships and good relationships mm -hmm. with people that have come out uh, and we we really are very grateful for that um, and at the same time um, watching others struggle mm -hmm. who are in trying to get out but yet they don't know how to do it in a way such that they wouldn't end up losing their family and this is something we recognize that every person has to come to grips with one way or the other they have to be very careful about how they approach it very mm -hmm. clear about what they want to achieve mm -hmm. and really check their values at, at the door and as to what they want to be, how they want to be known. Hey, Tricks and Tears, thanks again for stopping by. I just want to quickly let you know about a protest that is taking place this year on October 31st in Washington, DC. The aim of the protest is to expose the harmful practices of shunning in the Jehovah's Witness religion, as well as the widespread cover-up of child sexual abuse.
The permit for the protest has been approved and it will be taking place at the White House. The organizer of the protest has set up a website called BeFree2023.com. So please head over to that website for all relevant information. And I'm going to place a link to that website in the description of all of my videos from today until the day of the protest. If you're in or around the Washington DC area, it would be great if you could attend the protest. We really need your support. So, so in all, how long were you in the organization for? 36 years. 36 years. <clears throat> yeah, from 1985. Yeah. yeah. So how, how do you deal with the, you know, the emotional uh, trauma that that losing that big of a chunk of your life? Well, it's con it is considerable. Yeah. I, I don't quite view the loss on my part. I don't quite view that. I look at the loss on the part of my children for the things that they could have involved themselves in for the, for the, um, for the uh, either careers or for the pursuits they could have had, for the relationships they could have had, for the children they could have had. Mm -hmm. the grandchildren we could have had um, the, 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 the 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 contributions they could have made to other people's lives and for those uh, I regret and I think about um, but I can't think about those too long mm -hmm. because I, uh, as far as I'm concerned there's a there's a greater there's a greater need and that is helping all the others. Mm -hmm. Uh, come out from under this, 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 this snare. Mm -hmm. it, it's so true. The words that religion is a snare in a racket, and I, it's all religion is a snare in a racket. I, uh, I, I don't believe there's any quote unquote true religion. I really don't. Um, it's a very personal thing. If a person wants to believe there is a true religion, then it's their true religion. But as far as the true religion, I don't personally I don't believe in anything like that I think it's a very personal thing and any of the religion that's put forth has proven just to be such a snare a mm -hmm. snare and, a, and an exploitation of people yeah. and for me um, being that we were in it for 36 years the best thing that I can do and Joe we have um, Joe has a background in uh, counseling uh, he was a counselor in college. I was a teacher. So now so many people have reached out to us because we put our information out there on Wendy's program. And we're also on a program on Rick Fearon, uh, Six Screens. We do every other week now. We're on the outside story. Uh, the first um, subject we took was Suicide in the Watchtower. Uh, and we did a two-part series on that. And now we're just, uh, not just, but we're interviewing people. Last week we interviewed an author. Matter of fact, he's living in the UK. And we knew him when he was in the United States. We kind of touched bases with him again. And he wrote a book. His name is Gary Alt. And he was at Bethel. And he got to know the governing body back in the 80s. And the name of his book is Bethel Days, D-A-Z-E. And it should be out soon. That's a really, really good title. It is. And, and it frankly, is. it's a very balanced and reasonable um, exposure of real relationships yes. that he had yes. with, uh, uh, with, with, as he was a young person uh, with um, governing body members. Governing body members, uh, yes. Anointed at the time. Yeah. So it's a really helpful yeah. insight. He did a very good job. Yeah. Very dignified. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we've been doing that on a, um, you know, a, a big scale. And on a smaller scale, we're getting to find people that we knew because we were in so many congregations. That first congregation that we mentioned, we are finding young ones that came out of that and have been away from it. And they've seen us and they're just, we're connecting with them. We're connecting with ones that we recently, the congregation we just left, and that one sister that we mentioned that we that kind of tipped us off about four or five years ago, she left. Yeah. 
and she lost contact with everybody. And she said she thought that she was like the only one in, you know, that was that knew about it. When she saw us on Wendy Renee, she got in touch with us and it was so good because we had tried to get in touch with her once we were out, but we just were not making connections. And now we've seen each other uh, in person and we're not that far from each other. Right. And really part of all this, the, the tragedy of this, the whole situation is that the isolation that it puts on people, either who uh, uh, fade or who are disfellowshipped and shunned, it is, is painful. It's not only painful, but it's a, it, 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 it's, a cert, it's a form of emotional violence on them and their families that has bad consequences. Uh, and it's, it's, being, it's being felt and it's going to continue to be felt so long as there's this mm -hmm. policy of shunning. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's so special when the friends find out that they're not alone and they have mm -hmm. the loving support of each other. And that, that's what we're here for. Yeah. So we're opening up our place. We've got a, uh, a consignment shop in the front room that's open for anyone that wants to come that is being shunned, that uh, would like the emotional support. We've adopted so many that are our children's age. Um, that their parents are shunning them. So we have a mutual um, appreciation for each other. It really is a special thing. It's yeah. more special than we could have ever imagined. It really know, is. The relationships that. that are coming out are beautiful. They yeah. really are. They're, we have ones really that are. call us maybe daily or every other day. One gentleman, he, he was into it for 52 years. Mm. His wife is still in it. His son is in it. So he has to call us just to keep himself, you know, uh, in a positive mode. Because yeah. if he comes out, he ends up losing yeah. the deep relationships that, well, he shouldn't have to lose. No. Mm -hmm. It really is tragic the way that um, this organization rips apart relationships and families. Yeah. You know, it, it, I remember as a kid uh, going on the ministry, the three objections that I would that always stood out to me that so many people repeated over and over again is that Jehovah's Witnesses break apart families, Jehovah's Witnesses um, change the Bible. Yeah. And I can't remember what the third one was. Probably, but, um, probably the blood. Uh, the blood died. Yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, you let, yes, you let your children die. Yeah. That was yeah. it. The one about letting your children die, I would, I would dismiss that and say they just don't understand. The mm -hmm. one about changing the bible i i couldn't see how that was the case i thought I that, that our bible was just yeah. in modern english but nothing else was changed yeah. <laughs> oh better now obviously I know. But, um, the thing about breaking apart families i had no idea why why people were saying that i know, I know. But, but now it's, it's, it's obvious um, yeah. this is the letter that we wrote when exactly Do you remember um we wrote this um after we had sent the letter from the lawyer. Okay. Um, probably yeah. December, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say last December. Just to clarify to people what's going on with us. Are we going crazy? Are we going immoral? Are we whatever? <laughs> what's going on? So we just wanted a clarifying letter. We sent it to our, <clears throat> our family, we sent it to the congregation, friends, family. Just so we sent it to um, the mayor, so, the, yeah, that's right. uh, the psychiatrist, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. friends, people that we walk into our shop. Yeah. Okay, dear friends, we're very thankful to the Watchtower Society for <clears throat> teaching our family God's direction for us and the hope we hold for our lives and that of our friends. However, when a member expresses any questions about Watchtower policy, teachings, or directives, the member is met with potential discipline and frequently resulting in what is termed as disfellowshipping. Immediately, all members are directed to shun them. That is effectively cut, cutting off all communication with them. They immediately lose all physical, social, psychological, and emotional support that is critical to their health and welfare. The organizational practice of spiritual bullying has no place in the Christian congregation, let alone in civilized society. In glaring contrast, love directs us to show the kind of love and attention that Jesus displayed when he was present, loving them, not shunning them. 
<clears throat> we are actively raising awareness of the <clears throat> high rates of depression, suicide, and violence <clears throat> among our disfellowshipped and dissociated friends. Fran will continue. Okay. They have been and are presently being shunned by all congregation members, including friends and family. We invite you to join us in displaying true friendship and raising awareness of this present human rights crisis. We are finding much support in our community for the need to end this inhumane, destructive religious practice. Tragically, shunning produces victims. Therefore, the Christian principled practice of extending love and active support to those affected is what we are promoting. We invite you to share in the joy this produces for all. Until the Watchtower Society makes the rigid, excuse me, makes the required changes, we are completely removing ourselves from any involvement in it. Our focus is on showing the needed love and care for all our friends. We invite all to share in this and to put an end to shunning immediately. We needed to just to let people know that there's a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why we're doing this. Yeah. It isn't just a rash no. uh, move. It's a, the, 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 well, there's a reason. And I think basically it put a lot of people on notice. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and it challenges a lot of people in a way that maybe they weren't ready to respond to. But I think it takes time, mm -hmm. and, they, mm -hmm. and many are. Have you had um, any feedback from any of the like organizations that you've sent your letter to? Um, uh, the radio stations. Yes, the radio station. <clears throat> They're very interested in doing a yeah. um, spot with us, the local. Yeah, in fact, uh, we're meeting when? Probably tomorrow we're going to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So oh, sometime good. this week we'll be, we'll be on that. Um, so we're still putting the word out mm -hmm. there, you know, especially people that come into our shop at the end of our business with them. We ask them if they know any Jehovah's Witnesses, and usually they say no, but we tell them that we were and why we're not anymore. And to ask questions, if they see them, ask them, you know, yeah. do they have this shunning policy? Yeah, don't, don't avoid them. Um, you know, do they know that there's high rates of suicide, depression within the organization? Mm -hmm. Yeah, making them realize that most witnesses aren't aware of this. Mm -hmm. they're, they're basically in the dark. Mm -hmm. And what they could do is actually help them to um, come to realize what kind of organization they're a part of. Yeah. So we've noticed now that we've been helping other people, we've noticed that there's different groups that have come out, you know, what they're doing afterwards. Some of them want to totally forget that they were part of that organization. They want to get on with their lives. They just want to try to live a normal life. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be an activist. And that's fine. You know, all the power to them. We respect that. There are some that have blocked it. I know we were talking to a young person the other day. She said, I just blocked it all out of yeah. my mind. But what I'm afraid of is that something's going to come back. Yeah. It's going to trigger. Something's going to trigger them. So, you know, we try to, you know, if they want to talk about it, you know, talk about it. And we talk about our our situation. There's also those that are very activist. You know, they want to do everything that they can do uh, and more. Honestly, I'm I'm filled with admiration for what you guys are doing. The the empathy that you have for Jehovah's Witnesses, whether they're questioning on or not, is is absolutely obvious. You know, and I, I think that, that that's a really good and compassionate thing that you're doing. Well, these are people. These yes. are people that I mean they loosely term each other as friends, but Unfortunately, in the organization, they're just conditional associates. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not friends. Mm -hmm. They can't be friends un under the conditions and requirements and qualifications that they have. But when they're given the opportunity to be who they are, it's beautiful. It, it's, they, I, and we see that <clears throat> because we've had the opportunity to link them up with each other. Oh, yeah. And I mean, they're ones that when they call each other, they come back and say, you know, we talked for four hours. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. We try to link up ones with similar circumstances, but we have this one, he's like 
39 and we hooked them up with the one that's 72 and they talk every weekend and they've got oh, so beautiful. much in common yeah. they just he just he says i can't wait until he calls me you know and, and and so we find great satisfaction in knowing that at least we yeah. can connect people and and have that community i can see on your faces how happy it makes you to be you know be to be doing this and helping people in this way and we find out and we <clears throat> experience how happy it makes them mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> so it we're, does. we're very thankful. If you had any advice for any Jehovah's Witnesses who might be watching this video, what would that be? How to be honest with themselves, for starters. Mm. To be honest with themselves. To ask themselves if, <clears throat> if they are being the people that they think they are, the person that they think they are. And if they don't think they're being the person that they think they really are, they need to realize that their time is running out because <laughs> they have less time now than they ever did. Mm -hmm. and, and they do have time left to become the person that they truly are. And when they do, they will be glad. They will be very glad that they have. It's everything that we've heard and seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say don't be afraid to question. Don't be afraid to do your own research. Yeah. And you can research right within the publications. Yes. You know, check out um, 607 BC, BCE and see if that's really when Jerusalem was destroyed. Um, check out 1914. See about their um, their policies. What's their policy on uh, disfellowshipping, shunning, uh, you know, things that they don't maybe tell someone when they're studying, when they're first coming into this organization. Do your homework. Don't be afraid to to check things out. It means your life. It means your family's life. Yeah, and, and, and Riley, there's a, uh, uh, in the model of, uh, of of high control and to how it continues to control people's lives, there's a, it's called that they're under the fog of control. Fear, obligation, and guilt. Those three things that the society works on people to keep them engaged. Um, and to think seriously, you know, what we're doing with our lives, and to uh, and to, and to look at what uh, what the society that Watchtower Society is is achieving, what's coming out of it, the fruitage, as they would say, you know, what what's happening in their kingdom halls, mm -hmm. what's happening in the people's lives, is there depression, is there gladness, uh, to be honest about it, and mm -hmm. and to look to to see that there are others who are doing the same. There are so many that are making this awakening, this, mm -hmm. this move, uh, mm -hmm. and if they have company. They will mm -hmm. have very loving company. And I'll add to that, um, to seek out a professional oh, yeah. therapist, yeah. someone that you're comfortable with. Joe and I did right in the very beginning. Yeah. Um, he was very um, uh, knowledgeable about Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. about the suicide. He said he knew of one personally that um, did commit suicide. So, you know, seek out some professional therapist and then start to um, make a network of friends, whether it's friends from work or from school. I know that young ones are taught that they're worldly, but there's so many good people out in the world. And volunteer, um, Joe and I volunteered at a soup kitchen for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And now um, on Thursdays, we've been going and making sandwiches for the homeless. Um, you know, reach out and do whatever you do, don't isolate no, yourself. That's no, the worst thing you can yeah. do is to isolate yeah. yourself. Yeah. And be ready to learn. You know, you know, we're all children, no matter how old we are. Mm -hmm. we're all, we all feel like children at, at the time because we feel like we don't know how to behave in a certain area. Or we're uncomfortable or anxious. We're scared. Well, others are the same way too. And besides, if we're um, agreeable to it, we can actually learn from those around us. Or we can teach others who are around mm -hmm. us because they need to learn it from us. Uh, it, it, the exposure, uh, the people, is what makes life worth living. Uh, we're, we're interesting creatures and we find interest in each other. That is all really, really good advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to um, speak with me. God, thank um, you. Really, 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 God, thank you.
and I wish you all the best with what you're doing. Honestly, you're you're doing a really, really good work. Please keep it up. I appreciate that, Riley. And one of the other things that we want to do is to grant the Apostate Peace Prize to people like you who are doing what you're doing. You're working at that, and we truly, you deserve that. That is a great idea, Apostate Peace Prize. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thanks again. Please enjoy thank the rest you. of the day. Thank, thank you. you All right. Love All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, okay. thank thank you Bye -bye. so much for watching to the very end of the video. If you haven't already done so, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you like my work and want to help me continue doing it, please support me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash jexit underscore 2020 and with that i'd like to sincerely thank these very special patrons who make these videos possible